In this presentation, we are going to talk about some very important techniques of answering leading comprehension questions of uh, TOEFL. So uh, go through this whole presentation. You will learn a lot of important techniques which you can use in answering questions of TOEFL, IELTS and various other tests. All the best to you. How are you doing today? So welcome to this presentation. We are going to discuss a few very important techniques related to reading and specifically we are going to talk about uh, the TOEFL reading test. Here this is the sample from the ETS book. This is uh, the passage from the first test and I will take you through the test structure first and then we will go through solving a few questions. So basically this particular test comprises of reading comprehension passages as you can see the passage is given first as a whole and then the whole thing is broken down in the form of these paragraphs and there are questions based on specific paragraphs. So this is something interesting about TOEFL that you get uh, paragraphs and whatever questions are there they are you know focused on a certain paragraph itself. So you can go on reading one paragraph at a time and answer questions related to that. So the whole test is arranged in the same manner where you got the test and then the paragraph which is I mean it is uh, broken down in the form of small paragraphs. So we'll do a few questions from the first paragraph here. First before that we'll learn a few techniques of reading. So as you can see this is the first paragraph it is advisable to just go through it very quickly to understand what is going on and you can make certain diagrams like for example in this case they are talking about uh, the development of modern presidency in the United States began with Andrew Jackson who swept to power in 1829 so okay fine Andrew Jackson is there they are talking about Andrew Jackson who swept to power in 1829 as they are saying okay although there you will not be able to mark, make marks you can write it on a piece of paper uh, at the head of democratic party and served until 1837 during his administration they immeasurably uh, he immeasurably enlarged the power of presidency so this remains something related to politics and they are talking about certain parties 19th century politics in the united states I'll just read the first paragraph, first line of each. During Jackson's term, his opponent, so there is another entity which is his opponent, had gradually come to power, come together to form a Whigs party. So there are two parties as we can see. There is a Democratic party and then there is Whigs party. And this guy, Andrew Jackson, belonged to this party and these are the opponents so i'll write like this andrew jackson is here opponents are here they form the Whigs party this guy formed the democratic party held different attitudes so they held different attitudes like different ideologies are there so different political parties have different attitudes now i don't have to read the whole thing i can go to the next line Whigs on one hand were so what different attitudes they held is discussed here when I further go to the next page, probably they will continue this discussion about different attitudes which these people held and they will talk about it in different ways. So let's just see what is written here. I'm sorry. So yeah, I'm just reading the first line of each paragraph and this is something very important instead of reading everything you can just go through the first line of every paragraph and that will give you a chance to understand what the whole passage or the i mean the main idea of the whole passage is Whigs and democrats differed not only in their attitude towards market but also about how active and central government should be okay so this is again they are talking about the difference only like what was the difference the Whigs in contrast viewed government power positively so what Whigs are saying in some ways the social makeup of the two parties was similar so they are now talking about some kind of similarity to be competitive in winning votes Whigs and so basically some differences and some similarities between what Whigs and others believed so you know you don't have to read the whole passage 
this is one very important thing that you can just skim through the passage quickly to get the basic idea what i see is that there are two different political parties and there are different attitudes and behaviors and ideologies that they subscribe to and that is what is discussed here so you don't have to read the whole passage because while answering questions you can go through the details this will help you to save your time a great deal so let us see what is the question here every time when you do the question go to the question first understand it understand what is the nature of the question is it a word based question or a paragraph based question a word based question or a paragraph based question or a passage based question so word based question is when is, which is based on just one word paragraph is like you have to read a few lines from the paragraph or the whole paragraph and passage is something like a summary question which means you have to read the whole passage you have to have an idea of the passage first do word based questions first then go for paragraph or passage based questions let's see what kind of question is this the word immeasurably in the passage is closest to the meaning to so immeasurably is used here since it is here i'll just read two three lines the development of modern presidency in the united states began with this guy so they are talking about some kind of modern presidency and this guy was the one who who started modern presidency so presidency is like you know electing a president and everything okay who was the head of democratic party and served until 1837 so almost 9 years or 8 years yeah during his administration he immeasurably enlarged the power immeasurably enlarged the power so what is the meaning of immeasurably here frequently greatly rapidly reportedly so if i replace the word i can just put greatly here he greatly enlarged the power because something is immeasurable means huge or large or great he greatly enlarged and greatly sounds good in this context so i'll see, say greatly here enlarge the power of presidency so i'm see as you can see i am again using process of elimination here these choices frequently enlarged or rapidly enlarged or reportedly enlarged does not make sense if it is immeasurably it is related to size and greatly does make sense there okay let's go to the next question according to paragraph the presidency of andrew jackson was especially significant for which of the following reasons so they are telling reasons why so basically we are supposed to look at why this is again important see we are paraphrasing the question and that gives us a clarity of uh, what we are searching for clarity of what we are searching. according to paragraph 1 the presidency of this guy was especially significant so why was it significant okay so we know that he immeasurably enlarged the power of presidency so this is one thing because so this kind of adjectives used immeasurably enlarged i'll just read it a little bit more president is direct representative of american people he lectured at this place he was elected by people and responsible for them so whatever is written in quotes means he has said this with this declaration he redefined the character of presidential office and its relationship to people so he kind of redefined so this looks like a key word he redefined the character of this so let me see president granted a portion of his power to senate this is not said president began to address the senate on a regular basis well i don't see any such kind of evidence of regular basis and he's going every day something like that i don't see this it was the beginning of modern presidency in united states of course this is stated at the beginning itself began the development of modern presidency began at this time so this looks like an answer first time that senate had been known to oppose the president senate is not opposing it the answer is c So again, as you can see, process of elimination works well. Remain super focused. Just focus on one part of the passage, whichever you are answering, and just answer that particular portion, and you would do well. Let's see the next paragraph and the questions. During Jackson's term, his opponents had gradually come together to form Whig's party. We have already seen this. Okay, now this thing comes into play. 
and held different attitudes. So they had different attitudes towards the change brought about by the market, banks and commerce. So these three entities are there, market, banks and commerce. So what Democrats are saying now? So Democrats, I'll say Democrats tended to view society. Let me look at the question instead of reading it. Author mentions bankers and investors in the passage, an example of which of the following. <coughs> So let me now read it first. Bankers and are the examples of what? Uh, toward the changes of about markets, banks and other. The, the Democrats tended to view society in a continuing conflict between the people. So Democrat means conflict. The key word is conflict. Conflict between two parties. Uh, what are those? The people, which means the common men farmers, planters, workers, and a set of greedy aristocrats. So there are two parties and there is a conflict between people and aristocrats. This is what Democrats are saying, that there is always a conflict between common men, so I'll say common men, Amadmi party, and uh, uh, aristocrats, aristocrats. I'll not, I'm just making some notes for my own self. I don't have, write, have to write the whole word. Uh, Okay, the paper farmers and da da da. The paper money aristocracy of bankers and investors manipulated the banking system. Okay, see, they have highlighted this. Bankers and investors manipulated the banking system for their own profit. Okay, so they did it for their own profit. Democrats claimed and sapped the nation's virtue by encouraging speculation and desire for sudden unearned wealth. Claimed and sapped. Okay, Democrats claimed and sapped the nation. So these guys are actually manipulative. Bankers and all are manipulative is what Democrats say. Okay. So they have talked about bankers and investors as the ones who are manipulating the system. The Democratic Party's main source of support, the people of Democrat claim, were unfairly becoming rich. Of course, yes. Because I've got the evidence for this banking system. They are manipulating and sapping, so these kind of words, sapped the nation's value. Sapped matlab choose lena, ekdam khatam kar dena, is cheez ko galat tarikhe se use karna, chori karna. Sapped the nation's virtue, virtue is achai, by encouraging speculation matlab, jase market ko speculate kiya jata hai, bad jayega, ghat jayega, jua khelna type ki baat. And the desire for sudden unearned wealth. So yeah. People of people Democrats claimed unfairly becoming rich. I don't have to read the whole stuff because I've got the answer to this one. I can go to the next question. So you can quickly skim and you can kind of just get the questions that you want to answer and go on. So this is how you can answer the whole passage. Remain super focused, focus on one question at a time, decide which window of information are you supposed to read. Make some notes while reading, don't just keep on reading. And get the answer. Let's do one more question here. According to paragraph 3, Wiggs believed ab pe Wiggs ki baat a gai, that commerce and economic development would have which of the following effects? So it's talking about the effects. The question is about effects of commerce and economic development would have which of the following effects on society. See, these are the options. I'm not reading the options first. I'm going back to the passage. This is very important. Don't read the options before you know what are you searching for? So we are talking about the effect of commerce and economic development would have. Wigs were more comfortable with the market. So this is comfortable with the market. Ke mein. From them, commerce and economic development were, were agents of civilization. Ji. So they are talking, calling them as agents of civilization. Nor did the Wigs envision any conflict. Unke se koi conflict nahi hota hai. So, agents of civilization and no conflict, no conflict, agent of civilization and no conflict between bankers and others, farmers and all this. Economic growth would benefit everyone by raising national income and expanding opportunity. According to these guys, Wigs. ये बोल रहे हैं कोई लड़ाई झगड़ा नहीं है कोई ऐसा क्लासिफिकेशन नहीं है कि बिजनेसमैन लूट ही रहा है अकॉर्डिंग टू देम व्हेनेवर देयर इज अ डेवलपमेंट देयर इज एन आई मीन इट विल ब्रिंग गुड 
results for everyone. The government's responsibility was to provide a well-regulated economy that guaranteed opportunity for civilians, for citizens of ability. अच्छा जी, so there is no conflict और ये सब जरूरी है सिस्सा है और एक दूसरे के लिए जरूरी है. They would promote the advancement of society as a whole. Of course, ऐसा इन्होंने बोला है that economic development से ऐसा होगा. तो मैं इसको भी लेके चल रहा हूँ. They would cause disagreement between Whigs and Democrats. They would cause. क्या would cause? Effects would cause. Whigs uh, that commerce and economic development would have which of the following effects? They would cause disagreement. तो ये तो नहीं बोला इसने. They would supply new positions. नहीं. They would prevent conflict. Would prevent conflict. अब से कोई conflict रुक जाएगा ऐसा भी नहीं बोला इसने. वो बोला है कोई कॉन्फ्लिक्ट है ही नहीं लेकिन हाँ इससे पूरी देश का विकास होगा एडवांसमेंट्स ऑफ सोसाइटी एज अ होल आई हैव गॉट एविडेंस फॉर दिस नो वन एंड दिस इकोनॉमिक ग्रोथ वुड बेनिफिट एवरीवन देखिए ये जो वर्ड है बेनिफिट बेनिफिट एवरीवन बेनिफिट एवरीवन का मतलब हो गया एडवांसमेंट ऑफ द होल सोसाइटी एडवांसमेंट ऑफ सोसाइटी एज अ होल so benefit everyone i've got evidence for it i'll go with a so a is the correct answer here so look for evidence this is again very important look for evidence get the basic picture and of course you will have to read different types of passages so that you appreciate the content and idea very quickly jitne zyada aap passages karte jayenge aapke liye utna hi aasan ho jayega kisi bhi set of questions ko karna according to paragraph 3 Which of the following describes Whigs party's view of the role of government? So government has to coordinate, ऐसा कुछ बोला है. Provide well-regulated economy that guarantees opportunities for citizens. To regulate the conflict, continuing conflict between farmers and businessmen. Regulate करने की बात तो बोली है, लेकिन conflict को regulate करने की बात नहीं बोल रहा. So I'll say quantitative. रेस्ट्रिक्ट द चेंजेस ब्रॉट अबाउट बाई मार्केट बिल्कुल भी नहीं रेस्ट्रिक्ट की बात टू मेंटेन एन इकोनॉमी दैट अलाउड ऑल पीपल सिटीजन टू बेनिफिट ऑफकोर्स ये बात बोली है इसने दैट गारंटीड अपॉर्चुनिटी फॉर सिटीजन ऑफ एबिलिटी सिटीजन ऑफ एबिलिटी मीन्स केपेबल सिटीजन तो इसकी बिल्कुल बात बोली गई है रिड्यूस एम्फेसिस इन इकोनॉमिक डेवलपमेंट बिल्कुल नहीं सो द आंसर इज सी सो लाइक दिस वंस यू रीड इट केयरफुली यू कैन आंसर क्वेश्चन फ्यू इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग्स सबसे पहले आप क्वेश्चन पढ़ लीजिए क्वेश्चन पढ़ने के बाद में ऑप्शंस को मत पढ़िए पहले क्वेश्चन को अच्छे समझ के पैसेज को समझ लीजिए कि आप क्या ढूंढ रहे हैं एंड देन गो फॉर द ऑप्शंस लाइक दिस इफ यू डू दिस क्वेश्चंस इट वुड बी वेरी इजी टू आंसर मोस्ट ऑफ द क्वेश्चन फॉर अ फ्यू ऑफ दैम प्रॉब्ली यू हैव टू रीड अ लिटिल डीपर बट मोस्ट ऑफ दैम वुड कम वेरी ईजी टू यू लेट्स डू अ फ्यू मोर विग्स एंड डेमोक्रेट्स फिर से क्वेश्चन पढ़ते हैं इंक्लीनेशन का मतलब समझना है हमें is almost mean inclination despite andrew jackson's inclination to be strong president democrats as a rule believed in limited government okay to be a strong matlab uh, inclination is uski chahat uski ichha argument tendency example warning tendency looks like the best here example argument no it's not an argument I, if i wrote tendency here it makes sense then Despite Andrew Jackson's tendency to be a strong, you are tending towards something. You are inclining towards something. That's how you can use this. This is a vocabulary question, and you know, tending towards means bending towards means inclining towards. These are all related words. So yeah, example warning argument does not. Uh, these words do not make sense. According to paragraph four, a Democrat would be most likely to support government action in which of the following? Democrat means Democrat. He is Andrew Jackson. Wale log hai. Likely support government action. So, when will government action kab support? Karenge? Which of the following areas? So, when will government do its work? This is asked. Uh, uh, towards the market, but also about how active the central government should be in people's life. Despite Andrew Jackson. Uh, डेमोक्रेट एज रूल बिलीव इन लिमिटेड गवर्नमेंट मतलब गवर्नमेंट को बहुत ज्यादा इंटरफियर नहीं करना चाहिए सो इट इज लिमिटेड द की वर्ड इज लिमिटेड गवर्नमेंट रोल इन द इकोनॉमी वॉज टू प्रमोट कॉम्पिटिशन प्रमोट कॉम्पिटिशन बाय डिस्ट्रॉइंग मोनोपोलीज एंड स्पेशल प्रिवलेजेस इन कीपिंग दिस पॉलिसी ऑफ लिमिटेड गवर्नमेंट 
डेमोक्रेट ऑल्सो रिजेक्टेड द आइडिया दैट मॉरल बिलीव फॉर द प्रॉपर स्फेयर ऑफ गवर्नमेंट एक्शन ओह सो अब ये मॉरलिटी पे आ गया मॉरल बिलीव फॉर द प्रॉपर मतलब मॉरल इम मॉरल से कुछ नहीं होता आपका काम ठीक से करना चाहिए रिलीजन एंड पॉलिटिक्स दे बिलीव शुड बी केप्ट क्लियरली सेपरेट अच्छा तो रिलीजन और पॉलिटिक्स को अलग रखो एंड दे जनरली अपोज ह्यूमेटेरियन लेजिस्लेशन तो दे वर सेंग दैट यू नो एक तो लिमिटेड गवर्नमेंट होना चाहिए और उनको ऑल्सो रिजेक्टेड आइडिया ऑफ मॉरल बिलीव दैट गॉम दैट रिलीजन एंड पॉलिटिक्स शुड बी सेपरेट तो देखते हैं इससे हमें क्या मिलता है अकॉर्डिंग क्रिएटिंग अ स्ट्रेट रिलीजन बिल्कुल नहीं सपोर्टिंग ह्यूमेटेरियन लेजिस्लेशन आई डोंट अंडरस्टैंड व्हाट दिस इज लेकिन ऐसा कुछ बोला नहीं गया है तो मैं इसको भी ऐसे ले लेता हूँ डिस्ट्रॉइंग मोनोपोलीज ये बात तो साफ साफ बोली है रिकमेंडिंग पर्टिकुलर मॉरल बिलीव नॉट रियली तो सपोर्टिंग ह्यूमेटेरियन लेजिस्लेशन डिस्ट्रॉइंग मोनोपोलीज तो इसने बोला ही है रोल इज वॉज टू प्रोमोट कॉम्पिटिशन बाई डिस्ट्रॉइंग मोनोपोलीज तो डिस्ट्रॉइंग मोनोपोलीज बोला है इसने तो बोला ही है सो आंसर इज सी सो लुक फॉर एविडेंस वेन एवर यू गेट एन एविडेंस दैट आंसर वुड बी राइट सो द आंसर इज सी लाइक दिस यू कैन डू ऑल दीज क्वेश्चन अ फ्यू इंपॉर्टेंट टिप्स वंस अगेन गेट द बेसिक आइडिया बाई रीडिंग द फर्स्ट लाइन ऑफ एवरी पैराग्राफ then while doing questions remain super focused about one paragraph at a time look at the type of question whether it is a word based question or a paragraph based question or a passage based question do the word based and paragraph based question the small questions first and uh, yeah whenever you do a question use process of elimination eliminate the wrong choices quickly you would whatever is left would be the right choice read the question first go back to the passage look for evidence and then read the options do not read the options directly after reading the question agar aapke paas kuch decision lene ke liye hai to options ko aapko select karna hoga agar aapke dimag mein kuch select karne ke liye nahi hai to options aapko aur zyada confuse kar denge so it is very important that you uh, read the options after reading the paragraph and understanding what the question is asking and this way you would be able to answer questions very nicely and you would also have good speed use the right techniques so that you finish the test in the given time span initially when you start your practice focus on getting the questions right do not focus too much on time as we have discussed earlier time is always a result of doing something again and again so you would be able to manage time better if you practice enough so first of all your focus should be to get the answers correctly you should your, your precision is more important than speed during initial stages of learning and after that you can always develop speed or focus on speed thank you very much all the very best to you i hope this presentation was useful to you use these techniques and uh, all the very best for your test do subscribe to my channel for very interesting and useful videos on learning reading writing listening speaking and various other techniques for IELTS TOEFL PT and other standardized english tests all the very best to you thank you